Hi friends, welcome back to my kitchen where most everything is scratch made and home preserved. If you're new here, I'm Jenny. Welcome. Today I just have kind of a collage of recipes, some of my favorite recipes for holiday entertaining. Some easy hors d'oeuvres or appetizers, whatever, however you're serving them. If you're not sure, appetizers are served before your salad course, your soup course, or your dinner course. They're kind of a precursor to the meal. Hors d'oeuvres are the meal itself. So if you're having a cocktail party, hors d'oeuvres are what you would serve because you wouldn't be serving a main meal at a cocktail party. So pull a chair up to my counter and let's get started. Kind of like a shrimp cocktail, but instead of having shrimp cocktail sauce, I am going to have chilled shrimp with a mayonnaise based sauce. It's going to be a spicy garlic and pimento dip. So I have cut the end off here. I am going to pop one clove of garlic in there for now. I have one four ounce jar of diced pimentos. I'm going to put the liquid in everything. And I've got my one clove of garlic in there. And then I'm going to put about a half a cup of mayonnaise in here. I'm going to put about a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper in there. And if you don't want that much cayenne, you definitely don't have to put that much in. I'm just going to throw in some kosher salt. <laughs> if I can get it out of here. Probably half a teaspoon. This always turns to a beautiful shade of orange. I think it needs another garlic. Now, I have to be careful because in the past I have been known to add way too much garlic. I know you probably find that weird. <laughs> Because I put a ton of garlic in everything, but one year I made this and it, there was just so much garlic, it was, it was crazy. Even I thought it was too much. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of lemon juice in. Okay, juice of half a lemon here. And I am going to add just a smidge more salt. That is perfect. I'm just going to pour this in a dish to refrigerate. Now, if all of this doesn't get eaten with the shrimp, I use it for uh, salad dressing or anything else. Um, put it on sandwiches. It's really good. So when it's time to serve this, I'm just going to pop these frozen shrimp. They're already cooked, peeled, and deveined, and I will put these right on a tray and then put this in a fancy serving dish. This is all I have left of the baguettes. <laughs> I had, I got one baguette and I cut these in about one inch pieces. So I'm going to broil one side of them. My oven's on broil, I'm gonna put them in. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is make our um, crab filling that's gonna go on the little breads. Now I have lightly toasted them, just one side, and I'm gonna flip them over. I'm just getting ready for my happy hour, so I'm only doing these partial right now. Um, I still have some errands to run. So, I just want to be ready. So, I'm going to leave that side that way. Now, next thing we're going to do, I'm going to put six tablespoons of softened butter in here. And then I have a five ounce okay. jar of... Um, a cheddar spread. This one is an Old English. I love these um, deviled crab puffs. Sometimes I do these on English muffins. I love this Old English cheese. I will eat anything with this stuff. <laughs> but crab, this, this canned crab is particularly good with it. I don't know. 
but this makes for quick eats. So that is in. Um, I'm going to put in, there's my tablespoon. Okay, I have one tablespoon of all-purpose flour going in. I need two tablespoons of mayonnaise. Worcestershire. I need a teaspoon of Worcestershire. That looks like a teaspoon. I need one teaspoon of mustard powder. And then I need cayenne pepper, but I need just an eighth of cayenne pepper. Now my glass is on. Hopefully this is the smallest one. So one clove of garlic smashed. Other than my six ounce can of crab meat. And I'm going to mix this up first. Tell you what I know how to make a mess in the kitchen okay <laughs> I don't care what I'm doing I could be making microwave popcorn and it is going to get everywhere if you have a handheld mixer and you want to use that to get this mixed up that would be way easier I do I just don't want to get it out <laughs> for my canned crab. That's another easy part of this. You're just using the little can that you get by the tuna of crab meat. And we want to stir it in. We don't want to completely break it up. So I'm just kind of folding it in here. A good amount of mixture on each of these. Um, when you cut your French bread, you should be able to get 24 of these little slices out of them. So this recipe only makes 24. And then after we do this, we're going to freeze them. And then when we make them, we're going to put them underneath the broiler. This is pretty darn delicious, I tell ya. And because this has so much butter in it, it kind of sinks into the bread so good. So when I'm done with these, if I have more in here, I'm going to go back through and put them, put more on each slice. Because you want a good amount. Because these will puff up when they bake. Okay, I'm going to pop these into the... Put frozen crab puffs under the broiler for three minutes. And then here's how they turn out. Okay, for my next trick, um, I'm going to make mini turkey tacos with Baja sauce and an avocado salsa. The Baja sauce I'm going to make now. About an ounce of canned jalapenos, and this is a seven ounce can, but like I said, it also has, so I don't have seeds in my sauce. But don't flick these in your eyeball if you're using a fork. <laughs> I think I've told the story on here that I burnt my eye with baking grease and when I went to the eye doctor they said it was very unusual for baking grease that usually they see um, uh, hot peppers burns in the eyes. So Baja sauce is basically a jalapeno cream cheese. Um, every Mexican restaurant calls it something different. Macayos calls it a, a Baja sauce. Anyway, this is like my favorite stuff in the world. <laughs> I don't care what I order, whatever I order, get I always order a side of um, jalapeno cream cheese. Make sure you wash your hands after doing this. And okay, so I'm using an ounce of about an ounce of jalapenos, and you are going to want to wash your hands when, when you're done, but also use two bricks of cream cheese. You can double this recipe if you want to. So hot. 
Okay, so I have my jalapenos grated in there. I'm gonna heat up my cream cheese a little. Okay, I have two bricks of cream cheese and I have heated them in the microwave. Now, when you serve this Baja sauce, you serve it heat warmed up, not hot, just a little bit warm. I'll put in that much first. That's probably three quarters of what I mixed up. And you also are going to need a little bit of salt. Um, there's some kosher salt. I guess I don't have my bowl in there very well. <laughs> Okay, now I've got about four ounces of half and half. I'm gonna give this a scrape down and then I'll taste it and I love this stuff. Oh my gosh. The rest of the jalapeno in that I chopped. I like it spicy. Okay, this is done. I am going to go ahead and put it in a container and get it refrigerated. Apparently I didn't record or my camera didn't record the making of the turkey taco part. So, cook your taco meat, add two tablespoons of tomato paste, and then taco seasoning. Turkey needs much more flavor, so you need the tomato paste with the taco seasoning. Then you can fill your tortilla, taco boat, whatever vessel you are using for your taco. Wontons work really A couple well. tablespoons of um, butter. <laughs> I can't even cut it with this. Cold. This is carry gold butter. So I'm going to put two tablespoons of it in there. Get this turned on. And I'm going to saute a half of a white onion. It's about a medium onion. So here's my half a white onion. And I did dice it kind of small. Okay, these are sauteing up pretty good. I have three small cloves of garlic. I'm going to pop two of them in here. They're really little. And then one more small clove here. If you don't like as much garlic, you don't have to put it in. Start getting this sauteed. Uh, a 14.5 ounce can of chopped tomatoes. that in there and I have a 10 ounce can of um, chopped green chilies. Well, they were whole, I chopped them. Sometimes when you buy them already chopped, then they still contain a lot of the skin and I don't like that. So I buy them whole and then chop them myself. Ooh, and that's what I'm trying to be quick about it. Or you can um, get the fresh green chilies roasted, but I'm trying to make it easy today. Okay, this is where I'm going to put my cumin in. So, cumin. You want about a half a tablespoon of this stuff. And I'm also going to put salt and pepper in. I'm going to put about a half a teaspoon of kosher salt and probably a quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper. And then I'm gonna give this a little bit of heat and I'm gonna put in a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And then when it's all um, comes together, then I'll taste everything for seasoning again. All right, that's getting warm. So I am going to put in 
four ounces of cream cheese and start getting that melted. Now, when you're making queso, you know, like the, the queso dip, um, a lot of people will put the butter in and then put the flour in, um, you know, and then the, the, the cream and the cheese. You can do that. I like that, but my husband does not. It does create a grainy consistency, and um, you can taste it in there. So every time we go somewhere and they do the <laughs> aru-based sauce, he can tell. So I'm just going to put cream cheese in. And you can chop everything up more small if you want. I got everything chopped kind of big. But look, it looks like Christmas with the green and the red. Next thing I'm going to do is put in all my cheese. This is eight ounces of Monterey Jack cheese. And I'm gonna melt this in and I'll probably thin it with some heavy cream. And then we'll taste it for salt and pepper. It smells delicious in here though, I'll tell you that. But I'm gonna taste it right now for seasoning, make sure it has enough. Okay, that has a good amount of um, cumin in it. I think it needs a tiny bit more salt. Yeah, it's got a nice kick of heat. Okay, this is going into my crock pot on warm. First thing we are going to do um, is chop some green chilies. Now this is a, it's a chili queso. So I have a can that is seven ounces of green chilies. I'm not going to use all of them. I'm going to make this tiny little pan of dip because it's just my husband and I. So I'm going to use about two, two chilies in here. Um, this is not really, I mean, that's, I'm not going to use measurements for this. Um, it's just kind of a throw together. I know what goes in it. <laughs> and our Baja sauce already has jalapeno in it. If you want it spicier, you can definitely put more jalapeno. But these are my not spicy green chilies. <laughs> I like a little spice, but I don't like too much spice. Now I'll tell you, um, years ago we used to live um, more in Scottsdale area, and I've always worked over there. And uh, Carlos O'Brien's was over there, and my friend used to wait tables there at night after after she worked at our office. <laughs> so anyway, we used to go over there for happy hour all the time. So this dip was on the menu at least once a week. <laughs> sometimes more than that. <laughs> anyway, sometimes I still like to drag my husband down there just for happy hour, just to have this dip and chips. I'm trying to get all the little seeds out of there. I don't like seeds in my dip. Anyway, you could make this, um, more Christmassy, more festive by adding some red into it. Um, you can put pimentos in. A jar of pimentos would be really good in here. Okay, there's my two chilies. I'm going to put this in the... Now, in this container, I have my leftover Baja sauce. Now, I know you watched me make this stuff, but I can't tell you how much I love this stuff. Oh my gosh, I put it on tacos, burritos, tostadas. Um, this is the stuff that they put on when you get like, a, it's like a chicken chimichanga, but it's covered in this in cheddar. And they, every place calls it something different. So like Pollo Magnifico or, it's good. <laughs> so I'm gonna put, a few big scoops of that in. But yes, when I go, I always order an extra side of this sauce so I can dip my chips in it. Me and condiments, you know. So really, this, this dip is super easy. It's just the Baja sauce or the jalapeno cream cheese and green chilies. 
and cheese. So here I have um, extra sharp cheddar. I'm gonna plop some of that in. And then this one is a marble cheddar. And put a little bit of that in too. Like I said, no amounts. I'm just tossing it in because it's gonna bake together and get all bubbly and puff up and oh my gosh, is it delicious. And I have some organic, I'm gonna throw the rest of this in. I have some organic blue corn chips with this. And this is good for um, at home happy hour as well. Especially if you're already making the tacos. And, like I did mini turkey tacos. I didn't show that because it's it was kind of basic. I just used um, ground turkey and taco seasoning and some hot sauce in a jar. And then I put it in little, those little, um, I put them in these little, they've got these little flour tortilla bolts. So I put them in here, that way they could stand up. So I put the ground turkey in, I put cheese in, and then a little bit of avocado, avocado relish. I'm gonna take the rest of my sharp cheddar and put it on top. This is a pure cheese dip, okay? No low fat. <laughs> so if you're on a diet or you're avoiding cheese, Otherwise, it's keto friendly. <laughs> and there is my oven. I preheated it to 375. So I am gonna take my little dip and I'm gonna put it in the oven on 375 and I'm gonna bake this until it's golden brown and bubbly. So 15 minutes maybe. This is our dip, fresh out of the oven. I let it cool down for about five minutes just so it wasn't scalding hot. And it took about 30 minutes actually in this little dish. We're gonna make some really easy crab cakes with our little bumblebee canned crab meat. Make sure you drain your crab meat really well and also pick through it uh, for shell pieces. Okay, in here I'm gonna be using my Thrive, so freeze-dried products. If you don't have any freeze-dried products but you do dry your own, dehydrate your own, you can definitely use your own dehydrated products as well. I feel like crab cakes are a little bit of a free-for-all. Whatever ingredients you like, I'm gonna put a tablespoon of dried green onions in here. I prefer the green onions, plus they look more festive. I'm going to use red bell peppers because they're red and again festive, but you can use green bell peppers also. I'm just going to break these up a little bit. They come in strips. You can also put some pimentos in here, like a can of pimentos, jar of pimentos I guess I should say. I normally like green peppers in here, so um, whatever you like. We're gonna make mini crab cakes, perfect party sized. And ultimately this is about a tablespoon of red bell pepper. But if you are a Thrive customer, Thrive does have some green chilies that you could put in as well. I'm not gonna put those in today. I'm gonna keep them more um, Cajun style here. I'm gonna use some Tony's Cajun seasoning in here. Probably a teaspoon worth, one teaspoon. If you don't like Cajun seasoning, you could just do some lemon pepper. I'm going to crack in one egg, red bell peppers and those green onions. They're going to refresh in the moist um, crab. I'm also going to use half a sleeve of butter crackers. Normally I use Ritz for this. You can use bread crumbs if you have them, but around this time everybody has crackers but not everybody has breadcrumbs, so I thought, and I, I like them, actually prefer them with Ritz crackers. So that was half a sleeve, and they, they, have, they give it that buttery, salty in the inside. I just really like it. It's, it's a good flavor if you haven't made little crab cakes with this before. Okay, it has been six minutes. And these guys are looking pretty toasty at six minutes. <laughs> FYI, you can also <clears throat> skip the crackers completely and just make these keto. I'm gonna let these cool down. Look how delicious these look. I'm gonna let these cool down for just a minute. And we are gonna make a dipping sauce. Can't have a crab cake without an aioli. And that's just a fancy word for mayo. Okay, so to make the mayo, the dipping sauce, 
We're gonna need one egg. I've got one small clove of garlic going in. I'm gonna go grab my oil for standby. Oil is completely your choice. You can use avocado oil, you can use olive oil. I'm just gonna use regular vegetable oil today because it's what I have, but not as good as if I would've had avocado oil. You are going to need a blender, an immersion blender, or a food processor. When I rate the recipes, I'll give you the amounts for everything. So I'm not really giving you all the amounts right now. And I'm terrible about, I usually just make it without thinking about the amounts. So you're gonna start your blender over your egg. Slowly pour in oil. Okay, <clears throat> and then you are going to need, I'm like, I'm putting in pepper. You can put in whatever you want. If you want to do cayenne pepper, I am also going to use some Dijon mustard because I like it. And then at this point, I'm going to put in a little bit of um, bottled lemon juice. Okay, I'm going to, I kind of watered it down a little with my uh, lemon juice. <clears throat> Perhaps a little less would have been sufficient. First thing I'm going to do is make a butternut squash dip using my home can butternut squash soup base. Now my butternut squash is in chunks. This does have some apple in it and it has some carrot in it. This is going to be so good pureed with goat cheese and baked. Okay, I am draining up my soup mix and I have some fresh rosemary here, just a little sprig. Um, I don't want it to be super strong with rosemary. So I'm gonna chop up maybe one little teaspoon of fresh rosemary. There is my oven, it is ready. I preheated it to 400. Most of my appetizers are gonna bake at 400. I'm, I haven't decided if I'm gonna put these up on my website or not, because they're kind of, I feel like no recipe recipes. I am going to take my soup mix and put it in. Oh yeah, it is soft. I am going to put my rosemary in there. Save that for something else. And then I have goat cheese. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in a good chunk of goat cheese, nice tangy goat cheese. I am gonna add just a pinch of white pepper and a little bit of fresh grated sea salt and honey. I'm gonna put in a good tablespoon of honey. All right, get my little dip in here. I'm gonna put this in the oven at 400 degrees until it's done. I'll let you know how long it took as soon as I pull it out. Our dip is done. I let this bake for 25 minutes. I'm gonna let it cool slightly and we're gonna give it a taste. It smells so good. In this bowl, I have three green onions that I cut up and I just put, you can't even see it, I covered it up. I just put that crab in the bottom of the bowl. So I drained it, drained the water off. You gotta make sure there's no shells in there. Um, three green onions sliced. I need two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. So a few shakes. And you want about a teaspoon of Dijon. Dijon's good in everything, you know? I prefer the Grey Poupon, but you know, that was on sale. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna set that aside and we're gonna get working on the dough. In my saucepan here, I put one half a cup of water. So what I'm gonna do is make a pot of choux. And again, I'm only making um, a small amount of appetizers. If you wanna make a full batch, you're gonna wanna double this. But since it's just my husband and I, I'm doing a half. So this is perfect for any of you that are just celebrating with a couple or one, half a cup of water. I'm gonna put in a quarter cup of butter. I'm gonna get this started. I'm gonna throw in about an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. 
soon as this butter melts, I'm gonna add my flour and I'm gonna continue to cook it until my flour forms a ball around my spatula. And this is how to make pot of choux. You can do plain old cheese puffs this way by leaving the crab out. And if you don't like as many onions as I put in there, because I put a lot of green onions in there, you can do half of that amount, or you can do one or half of a green onion, whatever you like. Or if you don't like onions, you can leave them out. I just really like them, so I put in a lot. When this is boiling, I'll be right back. Okay, our water is boiling. I'm gonna add all the flour at once. Turn this down to more of a medium. <laughs> So this is, um, we're making a pot of choux, basically. Ooh, my, my spoon got hot. And the cheese puff, when you mix the pot of choux with cheese, it's called gougere, and that's a specific kind of cheese puff. So we are making basically a crab gougere. My spoon is hot. Ooh. Anyway, we want to cook this until it forms a ball around um, this, the spoon. So right now it's just kind of there. It'll be crackly in the bottom. And then I'm going to put it in my mixer. Whew, that's hot. And cool it off before I add the eggs. I happen to love the puffs. So making, I've made a lot of pot of choux and I love to fill these, making them savory. Sometimes I'll add the Parmesan um, when I put the eggs in. Then I fill them with chicken salad, crab salad, tomato salad, the cold salads when I serve them uh, instead of turning them into like the cream puff. I think that's the basic version most people know about is cream puffs, eclairs. This is the dough that you would use. This spring, I will show you uh, more about how to shoe and how to use the, the puff, the gruyere. Our dough is in a ball. I'm gonna go ahead and move it into my mixer. Here's our pot of choux dough. We need to let this cool for five minutes and then we're gonna go ahead and drop in eggs. I've let this sit for five minutes. I'm gonna start beating it. eggs in one at a time and I'm only using this smooth dough is exactly what we're looking for. I'm going to push everything down, make sure everything gets in there. One quarter cup of cheese and I have chosen to use half smoked uh, cheddar and half um, Parmesan cheese. But you can use regular cheddar, you could use Swiss, you could use Gruyere, you could use all parm. I'm going to get that mixed in and our crab mixture. All right, I, you can pipe these. You can pipe these from a bag if you want them perfectly round. Um, I'm just going to use my finger and a spoon. Because who wants to wash two teaspoons? <laughs> <laughs> these are so yummy you can make them as big or as small as you want if you're feeding a crowd double this batch and make them small I'm gonna put these in a 400 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes my crab puffs there took exactly 20 minutes the next two things we're doing take help from puff pastry. Now I've only got one sheet left and I'm going to make two appetizers out of one sheet since again it is only two of us. I'm going to get my little tiny pan started here. I am just going to put a little dab of olive oil in here. That might be a half a tablespoon so a teaspoon and a half. I have a half of a medium onion going in. What I want to do is caramelize this until it's brown and I'm going to put some bacon in here as well. And the bacon, instead of opening up packs of bacon, 
I keep these bacon pieces. A lot of times I get this big bag at Sam's Club, but I got this at my Kroger store. So I already cooked bacon bits. Um, I'm just going to put, I don't know, a tablespoon in those onions when they get close to done. So I will saute those while we work on the next appetizer. I'm going to get out my one piece of puff pastry. And I'm just going to roll this out slightly. This, these things are great. If you don't have one, this is the old Pampered Chef one. They now make them lightweight and plastic. So, might be time to get a new one, huh? You can also put this on a bigger surface and of course use a big rolling pin. I am going to cut this in half. I'll do the bigger. I'm going to leave a little bit bigger. Not quite in half. This one's a little bit bigger. And I want to use that for my little uh, bacon turnovers that I'm going to use. The onion and bacon turnovers. This one, we're just going to make a little pinwheel roll. So I think I'll just set this aside. And this one... I'm going to roll this out just a little bit more because we're actually going to make a pinwheel roll out of it. But we don't need that many because it's just the two of us. I have a chunk of brie cheese left from my cheese tray. And I'm going to cut the white off of it. The outside white part, not my favorite. I do eat it. You can leave it on if you like. But I am going to put little dots of brie through this whole thing. Puff pastry is really buttery, so you don't need to butter the surface with anything. And brie cheese is going to get super duper melty in there. I have a tiny bit of spinach that I reconstituted that I had uh, freeze dried. And I'm going to put sprinkle that in. Um, basil or herbs might be a little bit too strong for this. Because we really want the cranberry and brie to come through. So I, you can use fresh spinach if you have it. Craisins. This is a super festive. I am going to put craisins through this whole thing. I have a little bit of a fresh rosemary and that is like <clears throat> less than half a teaspoon. I do not want the herbs to overpower. You can put some toasted pecans in here. You can do whatever you want. Okay, I'm going to start rolling it up. Sharp knife, half inch pieces, and these are going to be the perfect size. Might I suggest if you are making these for a crowd, cut your puff pastry in half and do small ones. Okay, round them up, flatten them a little bit so they look good. You can brush these with an egg wash if you like. I'll move those probably out a little further once I get the other ones done. My onions are nice and caramelized. I've put nothing else in them. I'm gonna take, I don't know, a good tablespoon of bacon and put that in there. 
and I'm gonna cook that. These next ones, I'm gonna take a little cutter. We could do this way, we could probably do it this way. The fluted edge. These, I'm gonna take egg, an egg wash, and you know I might as well, since I did an egg wash, brush the other ones too before I bake them. I hope you can see. I'm just gonna brush that whole little thing because it's a tiny area. You can make these as big or little as you want. But I have bacon and onion I'm gonna put in the middle here. And these are gonna be tiny little pies, but here's the thing, you can make them any size you want. I'm making these little. And if you've got home canned bacon jam that you did, use that. With this little tiny bit of bacon, I am going to fold these up. It's still hot, I should let, you should let it cool off first. And I'm gonna pinch the sides. And I'm gonna set it right on my cookie sheet with the other ones. I'll be back when I have these ready. Okay, I went ahead and brushed them all with an egg wash and I put little fork holes in the tiny little bacon and onion turnovers. Into the oven, I'm guessing 10 minutes-ish. I'm gonna set my timer for 10 minutes. The next two appetizers take help from these uh, phyllo shells. They're already pre-baked. Take them out, let them defrost. Um, first one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a spoonful of sour cream, goat cheese. And then I'm going to grate some uh, lemon zest right in on my tiny little grater. My daughter-in-law has my microplane. <laughs> some chopped fresh chives. I'm just gonna stir this together. These are super simple, doesn't take a ton of time to prepare, and it's so yummy. One eternity later. I'm going to take the goat cheese sour cream mixture and put a dot in there. Defrosted a shrimp cocktail. And I'm gonna take some fresh chives and put a little bit more on each. My sea salt. And then my secret weapon. I have this lemon infused olive oil. It is so good. So I just wanna give each one of them a little Oh yeah, gorgeous. The last one is the easiest. I am going to take a little bit of goat cheese. Guess I should get the, well I guess they're not gonna get out. <laughs> little chunk of goat cheese in each. I mean, if you have this goat cheese left over from Christmas, but you can use with the cheese of your choice. If you have more um, cream cheese or something else. And my home canned fig jam. I don't know if I have a video on this. I can't remember if I did it or not. <laughs> but I am going to put that right on top. You can use any old jam you like. And since I have a couple teaspoons of this bacon left over, I think I just might throw those on top. Make sure your cream cheese is soft. Okay, I had to stick mine in the microwave for a minute because it was still cold. But I am going to spoon the entire can of Underwood deviled ham in here. Making a mess all the way. <laughs> and then, in order to make this holiday flavored, oh yes, you guessed it, we are going to put in a little bit of spice. I'm going to put in a pinch of clove. You don't want any more than that, you know, it, we don't want it to be completely sweet, but we do want to add a little sweetness. 
that ham is salty. I am also going to put a pinch of ginger, a tiny pinch of cinnamon. I have one orange. I guess I should take off the label here. I washed it. But I am going to zest it in. We want a little sweetness and we want that orangey flavor. You can also put in a little pineapple juice if you prefer the pineapple flavor. You could, you could mix um, maybe some crushed pineapple in here, a couple tablespoons. You could put a little maple in maple syrup in here to sweeten it up a little bit. So it's like a candied ham dip. Or spread, I guess I should say. And for a pop of freshness, along with the orange, we're gonna do a little bit of green onion. I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of green onion. If you don't like green onion, leave them out. So that's probably about one green onion total. And then we need to get this into a container and into the refrigerator to set up. Instead of the green onion in here, you could put a little fresh chive, you could put a little bit of chopped fresh um, rosemary in here. It'll be a little bit more festive. I already had green onions in my fridge chopped up and ready to go. Chill this for a couple hours before serving. So we'll be back when this is chilled up. Okay, we have given our dip a couple hours to rest in the fridge. Make sure you serve these on big, serve this on big crackers. Delicious, delicious. First thing you're gonna do is preheat your oven to broil. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is cut out your rounds. You're gonna need 18, well about 18, depending on what size you make them. Um, sometimes you'll get 24 out if you decide you wanna use a tiny round and make them little. Um, so then you need to decide what size you wanna make them. And I have no idea what size this is. These are actually Swedish, <laughs> so I want them that big or I don't want them this big. Let's do them that big. Um, or I'm sorry, they're French. So figure out what size you want them. This says 40. I don't know if it's 40 millimeters, I don't know. Cut out your rounds. Decide your bread too. You can use any kind of bread you want. I have a piece of pumpernickel here. Don't get rid of your scraps. You can turn this into croutons. And these are so good. Oh my gosh, I love cheese puffs so much and I love all cheese puffs. <laughs> and I can never decide. So I will tell you, I always make this kind and the other kind. And people are so amazed when they eat these. Okay, so I have my little rounds. I got a little parchment paper here. Um, I don't like to put the spray down to tack it down because it leaves dark marks on my pan. So first thing I'm gonna do is butter my rounds. You just need a little bit of butter. But you wanna cover the whole thing. You can use any kind of cheese you desire as long as it is a firm cheese for this one. If you use a soft one, it's just gonna spill out everywhere. The next thing, Dijon mustard. You need a tiny swipe on each one. It'll mix in with the butter and it help, it makes the cheese have such a good flavor. I love the taste of Dijon with the sharp cheddar cheese. I just kind of put it on one and swipe it, wipe off the excess, move to the next. Believe me, that tiny little smear of Dijon, big difference. I have a bowl. I am going to whisk this egg white. And we'll save that yolk for something else. Into this egg white, I'm gonna put a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar. 
and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Be careful with the salt because cheese is salty. I'm gonna put in a pinch of cayenne. You don't like cayenne, leave it out. This is where you can add whatever flavorings you like. If you wanna put garlic powder in here, herbs, Italian herbs, taco seasoning, chili seasoning, just make sure it matches your cheese. The egg white, we just wanna beat until it's frothy. You can do this in your, your uh, mixer if you want to. We're not doing it till stiff peaks or anything. And we need to make sure that cream of tartar dissolves. If it does not, it will make your cheese have the weirdest, grittiest feeling. Believe me, I made that mistake. Okay, one and a half cups of cheese. I am using sharp cheddar. And I actually think it's extra sharp cheddar. It is the Wisconsin extra sharp cheddar uh, from Trader Joe's. We just need to mix this egg white through the whole thing. Okay, I'm gonna mound my cheese on top. And I use, this is a, a half a tablespoon and it works perfectly for this size. So I'm gonna put my half a tablespoon on. You gotta kinda coax it to stay together. I'm gonna put these under the broiler for about three minutes. Make sure you watch them, do not walk away. Here they are, cheese puffs. So good, the bread stays soft. Underneath the cheese is all puffed up um, because we put that cream of tartar in there and the cheese stays together. Oh my gosh, that little tiny bit of mustard makes it taste so good. If you like cheese puffs, you gotta try these. Next recipe, the next cheese puff are my Gouda Puffs, and these are easy Gouda Puffs. We're not even going to bother making the um, pot of choux kind of puff. We're going the easy route. I have some smoked Gouda. This is from Trader Joe's, and I'm going to go ahead and grate this. I'm going to make half of a recipe today, but I will put the recipe in the description box for a full recipe. So first thing I am going to do, you need a half a stick of softened butter. So four tablespoons softened butter. I'm gonna pop this in the bowl. I'm gonna grate this. You can grate it however you want. You know, nothing fancy. A microwave plate and a box, a box grater. This is the golf house. We're not fancy around here. <laughs> Good old fashioned home cooking. I need one cup of this cheese. You can use the regular Gouda. You don't have to use smoked. Smoked can be a very strong flavor and not everybody likes it. I think that is probably a little more than a cup. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my cheese in the bowl. Put that little leftover in. I'm gonna put in a pinch of salt. Again, it doesn't need that much. Uh, maybe, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. And then I'm going to use about a quarter of a teaspoon of paprika. If you want to make them festive, put some chives in. But I'm going to go ahead and beat the cheese and the butter together before I put the flour in. I am putting in one half a cup of all-purpose flour. I should probably pull this up. Just bring it into a dough. Okay, now that we've got our dough, keep in mind the dough on these will be crumbly, but it sticks together. So you're going to pinch off as big as you want to make them. I keep them small. So maybe a table, no, not even, uh, a teaspoon and a half is about the size that I make them. You can use cheddar cheese for this. You can use Monterey Jack and put in a whole bunch of seasonings. You like chili seasoning, taco seasoning. You could even put taco seasoning in the um, cheddar, extra sharp cheddar cheese. All up to you. Flavor combinations are huge. This is almost the same recipe for the cheese crackers, the slice and bakes. Um, the only difference is you, we use room temperature butter and then um, we don't refrigerate it before we bake it. 
do not add water to this. Even though the dough looks dry and crumbly, it will come together. If you put water in this, they will puff up into little biscuits and they'll be large and flat and stick together. These are gonna go into a 350 degree oven. I already have my oven preheated, I forgot to tell you that. And these will bake 10 to 15 minutes, depending on your oven and how done do you want these. I tend to pull them out slightly sooner. Um, they start getting golden and I pull them right out. 13 minutes and they are done. Yum. It's still super hot. Oh, yum. Look at that cheesy deliciousness. Oh, yeah. A super quick, easy cheese puff. Mm. I like little cheesy cookies. And they're soft. I do hope you give these a try. I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. I have a one sleeve of the buttery round crackers. You can use whatever brand you like. And actually, I think I'm gonna use a sleeve and a half. I think it needs a little bit extra. Okay, that is good. And then I have some pecans. And I'm going to throw in a good third a cup of pecans. You can use almonds if you like. If you want to use more pecans than crackers, whatever you want. You're going to need um, about a cup and a half of crumbs. So I'm guesstimating on my cup and a half of crumbs. I'm going to chop this up. My butter is clearly done in the microwave. <laughs> I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to drizzle in one third a cup of uh, butter. This smells so good. If you want to make put more flavor in your crust, you can totally do that at this point with some herbs or garlic, whatever you want. oven is ready. I want to press this in the bottom of my pan. I don't need to grease it because I've got, I'm using buttery crackers and um, I've put butter in it. So I'm going to take my little glass. Do you guys save your little, little cheese glasses? <laughs> I do. I really like to get a little bit up the edge here too, so maybe I'll do that first. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it in the oven at 350 degrees for 10 minutes and then I'm gonna pull it out and let it cool off. You can also put Parmesan in your crust if you wanna add in after, um, after you've pulsed it in your food processor, you can add a half a cup of cheese and then your crust will even stay together even better, but um, it gives it that nice crunch when you add the cheese to the crust. Right here I have um, some onions going and I already put in a sprig of thyme. I actually took the leaves off and put them in. I am going to add two sage leaves that I chopped and maybe a whole teaspoonful of fresh rosemary. You can use more if you want. Depends on how herby you like it. I want a hint of the herb flavor, but I don't necessarily want, you know, the in-your-face herb taste, so. I just want to soften these up. I'm gonna actually put some garlic in there as well. A clove of garlic. And again, I don't want a garlic flavor. I just want it kind of in the background. You just want to saute it till it's a little bit soft. You can use a shallot for this instead of the onion and garlic. And the onion was just a half of a small white onion. I don't want a ton in there. Again, this is a savory pumpkin tart, but these are the aromatics. So they're gonna add to the flavor. You don't want them to overwhelm it. I think that's a mistake sometimes that's made is you think the more the better and you start tossing in herbs. <laughs> Sage gets really strong and so does rosemary. I have turned off the heat there. I'm going to 
put four large eggs in here. This is a custard, just like when you make pumpkin pie. I'm gonna put a teaspoon of Dijon in there. Two tablespoons of melted butter that I've cooled off. I'm gonna put into this some heavy cream. Okay, so I'm gonna three quarters cup of heavy cream and a quarter cup of half and half. This is the pumpkin puree, the pumpkins that I roasted. I wanna put about a cup in here. Then my onions and garlic and herbs. Again, it's not a lot. We just want it kind of in the background. I'm gonna put in a teaspoon of dried parsley as well. I don't have fresh or I would have chopped it and put it in with the other. Um, and then I've got about half a cup of grated Parmesan. You can put in here some smoked Gouda, you could put some Gruyere. I've done it a couple different ways. Parmesan is my favorite. Here is my cooled crust. I have actually made this for every fall party I have ever thrown. I love it that much. And if you put it in a sheet like this, usually I do the big huge cookie sheet so I double the recipe. You can cut it into little squares, so good. I'm gonna put this in the oven and it's gonna take about 30-ish minutes but I'll let you know either way, five minutes or so. Give or take on either side. Okay, uh, the squash tart is done. It actually took 25 minutes, so I'm gonna let it cool before I cut it. This is best served around room temperature. A little bit warmer than room temperature if you like, but um, room temperature is good. You don't have to refrigerate, you don't have to heat it up. Okay, I'm gonna cut into the squash tart here. Again, this is really good for appetizers if you cut them into small squares. There it is, squash tart. You can use pumpkin puree, butternut squash puree, or acorn squash puree. All of them work. And I've made it with all of them and I don't like any more, any of them more than the other. They're all good. I love this, this is so good. It's a nice change from making sweet things with your squash. More like a savory pumpkin pie. And I am gonna put four and a half teaspoons, which would measure up to two packets. Of instant yeast, did I say instant yeast? I don't think I did. Okay, so there is my two packets or four and a half teaspoons of instant yeast. And I am putting into this Three teaspoons of sugar. And that is just, you put it in together because the yeast likes to eat sugar and it blooms nice. Give that a quick stir. I'm gonna let this sit for 10 minutes. Okay, into this I am going to put four cups of flour. And this is bread flour. This is instant yeast and you technically don't have to bloom it, but I have better luck when I put it in the warm water and let it sit for 10 minutes no matter what. I am going to put in here a teaspoon and a half of salt. I'm also putting in here a whole teaspoon of garlic powder. And I'm going to put in about couple tablespoons of olive oil. Okay, you can get it in my mixer and get this going. 
I'm gonna mix this in and then I'm gonna knead it for five minutes. And I'm gonna time this for five minutes. Okay, FYI, <laughs> I've made it into a ball and I put it in a oiled bowl and covered it. I'm sticking it in my oven with a light on. Um, I'm gonna do this for, <clears throat> till it rises. So, I don't know, about 45 minutes or so. Okay, I'm starting to have this repetitive forget to turn my camera on thing. <laughs> Got a quarter cup of butter in here and probably, I don't know, a few tablespoons of olive oil. I'm just gonna get those melted together. So I'm gonna put this on the top of my garlic knots, but I'm gonna put it on about middle baking because I'm using fresh garlic, number one. So I'm gonna get that in there. These are, after all, garlic knots. Okay, so that's five cloves of garlic. Just heating it up gets it nice and garlicky and the garlic spreads out through all of the oil. Actually, I think I'll need a little bit more olive oil because we need to cover the entire surface. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of salt. That was probably a quarter teaspoon. And then I've got some Italian seasoning. So, I don't know, I'm gonna go with a good, good rounded teaspoon of it. And this is gonna sit here and cool off and just keep getting delicious and garlicky. So, set that back. Next thing I'm gonna do is cut up some vegetables and get them sauteed in a pan a little bit and let them cool off before we fill our buns. So I've got my mushrooms in the pan and I'm using about four cremini mushrooms. I'm just gonna give my filling a light saute um, just because I can and <laughs> I like it a little bit better because it's not gonna reach the outside of the oven like a top of the pizza would. And I'm probably gonna end up using a whole onion. Most people would probably use a half, but you know, this is the golf house, we're using a whole onion. <laughs> Sit here and pull them apart. Got some black olives. These don't really need to be fried, but you know, I just want to throw them in anyway right now. <laughs> I've got a package of pepperoni. I'm gonna chop and drop in there. All right, there's some pepperoni. Okay, and that is cooked just enough so that you know, it melts in good with the cheese. It's not overly cooked. My vegetables are not by any means soft. Okay, all my components are done and ready. I'm just gonna cool these off. So I'm gonna move that away from the heat. And as soon as my bread is ready, I'll be back. Okay, my dough has doubled in size. I am all ready to go. So I'm gonna set my oven to 400. And I'm gonna stretch these guys out again. Kind of like we're making pizza, right? And you just kind of pinch it down as you go. Get in there. 
I have to get the sides pinched, then you bring them back together, pinch the whole thing up. Give it some little feet. Okay, and move it into place. Okay, and so I am just going to keep on going with this. Bring these edges up, pinch these. Okay, and here is our garlic butter. I'm gonna put some on in the beginning, and then halfway through, I'm gonna put the rest on, or I'll put some more on, and then whatever's left is gonna go on at the end. Because garlic knots need to be garlicky. <laughs> I have actually ordered them with my pizza and then I go to get them and open them up and there's not enough garlic on them and that makes me so unhappy. <laughs> so I'd rather make them at home. Okay, look at our gorgeous tree. Ready for the oven. It's going to go in at 400 until it's done. I have no idea how long that is going to take, but I'm guessing 15 minutes-ish or so. So I'm going to put my timer on and about eight minutes in, I'm going to put more garlic oil on. Okay, they're about halfway through the baking process. Look how gorgeous. I am going to put more oil on. Get a lot of this garlic on here. Now I'm kind of doing it in stages because I don't want my garlic to completely burn either. And I've already cooked it a little bit in the oil, so it's not completely raw. We need to put some decoration on. I have pepperoni that I've chopped up. And red bell pepper. Just to give it a little pop of color. Back in the oven for another eight minutes and then we'll see where we're at. All right, look how beautiful they are. I'm gonna do one more garlic oil butter because, uh, again, I like it garlicky, but also I wanna keep it moist. I don't want them dried out. If you wanna serve this with sprigs of rosemary tucked in for a party, you could totally make these a lot smaller. We're doing this as a dinner version, but you could do it as an hors d'oeuvre version and just make little tiny ones and then serve it be very delicious okay that's the last of that i am just going to put a little bit of parmesan on um i get this one from the deli they import it from italy it's delicious but you can you can even use the cheap stuff in the the can i use that all the time actually so i'm going to do that and then i've got alfredo sauce and pizza sauce red pizza sauce all right here is my Pizza garlic knot Christmas tree. I'm going to cut into it. Still a little hot. A lot hot. What am I talking about? Got the cheese coming out. All the stuff in there. Cheesy goodness. Ooh, they're hot. Super delicious. Garlicky, soft like garlic knots should be, but full of flavor on the inside definitely a must try. You can fill them with whatever you want. If you just want to do pepperoni and cheese or just cheese or a couple different cheeses, that would be great. And then, like I said, we are serving them with pizza sauce and Alfredo sauce.
a little bit of butter in this pan, maybe a tablespoon. And I'm just going to put my pan on a medium. I have one small onion that I've chopped. And I'm going to get this sauteing. Put a little pepper. A little salt. I'm going to saute this on a medium to medium low just until these are a little bit translucent and soft. Okay, these are almost cooked. I'm just going to throw in um, three cloves of garlic. When that garlic hits the pan, oh my gosh, that is my favorite smell in the whole world. <laughs> garlic, cooking garlic. Okay, I'm going to turn the heat off. Okay, in my food processor, I have one nine ounce package of frozen spinach. This is frozen chopped spinach, but we're gonna chop it up more in this food processor. We're just gonna put everything in here together. I'll take my onions and put them over here. So this is the onions and garlic going in. If you don't like them, like I said, you can leave them out. And we are gonna use a one 16 ounce container of cottage cheese, secret ingredient. We're gonna put in some pepper. This is where you can start flavoring with anything you like. So if you wanna throw some herbs in here, okay, a little bit of salt. We need three eggs. Okay. This is all that goes in other than two cups of cheese. I'm using triple cheddar, but you can use regular cheddar. You can use Monterey Jack. You could use Parmesan. Just keep in mind, Parmesan might be a little bit salty, so you might want to do one cup of Parm and one cup of um, mozzarella or something mild. All right, we're going to give this a whirl. I'm going to put in the cheese and then just whirl it a little bit. Then, after this base is done, then you can add, you know, sliced green onions, mushrooms, red bell pepper, green bell pepper, you know, whatever you want. You don't want to slice that stuff up. You want that stuff to still uh, be visible a little bit. You'll want to see chunks. You want to know what you're eating. Okay. Get that off of there. I somehow always manage to make a mess on top of that. So I'm just going to briefly whirl this right in. Done. That is our whole mixture. This is so good. Like I said, make it your way. I have a buttered eight by eight casserole dish here. And I'm gonna just put this in the. Now, if you want to do these appetizer style, you'll wanna put them in maybe a nine by 13 and bake a really thin layer. That way you can slice them and stack them. Or if you wanna keep them thick, you could definitely do that too. I'm gonna take all the spinach mix and put it right in. It also goes further too if you put it in a little bit bigger of a pan. So depending on if you're feeding a lot of people and you know like for Thanksgiving dinner you might want to put it in a little bit bigger of a pan. Um, for us a side dish um, an 8x8 or 9x9 is perfect. Okay I am going to put this 
into my preheated 350 degree oven and this is gonna cook about 45 minutes to an hour. I'll start checking it at 45 and let you know how long it took. Okay, our spinach squares are out of the oven. And I'm gonna cut into these. I, I had to let them cool off a little bit. And these took, oh, how long did they take? 40 minutes. And there they are. Yum. Still a little bit warm, but super cheesy and delicious. I love these spinach squares. You could probably turn this into a mean dish. I actually got this recipe years ago when I worked pediatrics. Um, Kim gave this to me. So if Kim, you see this video, I am still making your spinach square recipe. <laughs> I love these, but like I said, you could dress them up anyway, add all kinds of stuff to them. Okay, we're gonna make baked olives first and these kind of can double as a cheese puff. It's the same cheese puff dough that I'm using for the baked olives as I'm gonna do some plain. So. I've got a quarter cup of butter in here. This butter is salted. If you prefer to use unsalted, you can use unsalted. I have one half a cup of flour going in. I'm gonna add my seasonings right to this. I'm gonna put like a quarter teaspoon of salt in there, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of mustard powder, and a good pinch of paprika. Okay, that is all for the seasonings. And I need one cup of shredded cheddar. Now you don't want to use the um, the pre-shredded stuff at the store. It just doesn't work very well. It doesn't mix in very well. And I will tell you what, I'm using cheddar today, but you can use any flavor of cheese you like. Um, I do these sometimes with smoked Gouda. Um, I've done them with Swiss. I've done them with um, all kinds of cheese. So I'm gonna put my cup of cheddar in also. There we go, that's just a little extra I think. You can do this in the food processor if you prefer. I'm just gonna work it in with my hands. Your choice of olives, whatever kind you like. These are just regular pimento stuffed olives. But if you wanna do some garlic stuffed olives, blue cheese stuffed olives, whatever kind of olive you like, a black olive, um, you're just gonna wanna take a piece of dough, probably a rounded teaspoon, unless you have a bigger olive. Put your olive in the middle. And roll it up. Okay, I'm gonna get this on my cookie sheet. I've just got a piece of parchment on there. I've got my oven preheated to 400 degrees. Now these do not have any leavening in them and they will not spread. Or they're not gonna puff up and spread so you don't have to be super careful about how close together you're putting them. At least a half inch apart. And then you can make some plain if you want. I'm gonna do half of this plain. Cause not everybody likes olives. But you know, if you wanted to put a nut in the middle of this, like a walnut or a pecan, you could do that too, that would be good. My kids love these growing up. Um, their favorite is when I do this plain like this with smoked Gouda. Okay, here are all my rolled balls. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the 400 degree oven for about 10 minutes. Um, it's 10 to 12 minutes. These usually take about 10 minutes for me. Um, the one with olives, I put a little extra cheese so I would know which one was which. Okay, the cheese puffs are done and I have cut one in half with the olive. Delicious! The next thing we're gonna make is chicken spread. Super easy, super quick, delicious. In this bowl, I'm gonna put eight ounces of cream cheese. So one brick. I am also gonna put one can of white meat chicken spread. These are usually over by the tuna.
I'm gonna put a few dashes of Worcestershire. I'm gonna put some black pepper. You're probably gonna want like a half a teaspoon. And then, um, dried minced onion. Let's see, that's a tablespoon, um, probably a tablespoon and a half. A little bit of bottled lemon juice and a tablespoon of soy sauce. Sounds weird, but it's so good. I'm gonna give my bowl a scrape down and taste it because it might need just a smidge more Worcestershire. I'm gonna put one extra little squirt and that'll be good. Oh my gosh, that's so good. So it ends up being more like a tablespoon of Worcestershire and a tablespoon of soy. Throw in a teaspoon of dried parsley. And there is our chicken dip. Super delicious. I'm gonna refrigerate this for two hours and I've already put it in a serving dish. So I'm just gonna cover it, refrigerate it. It'll be ready. Next thing I'm gonna be making are my mince meatballs. I'm just doing a small batch for us tonight but you can definitely make a larger batch. This is a half pound of ground beef. One egg. I'm gonna put some black pepper in here. And a little bit of Himalayan pink salt. I'm gonna keep these kind of plain because the flavor is in the sauce. So I've got French fried onions. Instead of breadcrumbs, I'm going to be using these. So I've got a half pound of ground beef and I'm probably going to be using maybe a quarter to a half a cup of the french fried onions. And get this stirred up together. Again, not a lot going in here because the flavor is in the sauce. If you over flavor your meat and then over flavor your sauce, everything kind of gets lost. Okay, I'm gonna get my pan hot. You're gonna want a nice light oil for this not an oil with flavor, so no olive oil. And I've got this on a medium high. I wanna give these a good sear. Again, if you're having a lot of company, you're gonna to wanna to make more of these. And you can make these and not put them in a frying pan. You can do them right in a baking dish, like a nine by 13. Um, bake them off and then at the last minute, toss them in a crock pot to keep them warm. Uh, make the sauce in, in the crock pot or make the sauce heated up and then dump that in the crock pot first and then put your cooked meatballs in it um, to keep it on warm or chafing dish, um, whatever is easiest for you. I tend to always pop them in a crock pot. Also, another tip, you can use um, a pound of beef and a half a pound of ground pork or you could do sausage. Um, I wouldn't do Italian sausage, but like a breakfast sausage would be good. Okay, the meatballs were mostly done, so I have pulled them out. I have got a half a cup of mold cider going in. I'm going to put a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. This is my mincemeat jam. I have a video on this. I'll link it in the description box below if you didn't see it, but I made this yesterday. It is so good. And I am going to put, oh, a heavy quarter cup in there. If you wanted this sweeter after you got done, you could definitely add more sugar, but this jam's pretty sweet. And I am going to go ahead and add my meatballs right back in. Get them covered with this sauce. I'm just gonna let them simmer in this sauce until they're cooked the rest of the way through. 
So 10 minutes or so, they're pretty cooked. So I'm gonna put this on just a medium heat. I'm gonna go ahead and cover them and let them simmer for about 10 minutes. I have turned my meatballs off and they have simmered in the sauce with the raisins and the apple. Oh my goodness, so good. All right, I am gonna taste test my meatball. Super delicious, it's moist, oh my gosh. Hot too, by the way. That is so good. If you've made this jam, you're gonna wanna make these meatballs. And then my cheddar cheese pup with the olive. That's always good. <laughs> the last appetizer I have for you is a simple deviled egg. I am going to show you my very favorite deviled eggs. And these are egg salad deviled eggs. I've got a little bit of onion here. I'm just doing a small amount. Um, I'm gonna make 12 deviled eggs. And I am pre-chopping a little bit of onion here. Okay, that's probably enough. I don't need a lot for six eggs. Um, I've got a little tiny chopper. I'm gonna put it in here. This is how I prefer my eggs. And I make an array of different deviled eggs and I love the wasabi deviled eggs too. Um, but I just really love this plain egg salad deviled egg. I have one dill pickle. And so one pickle for six eggs is enough. Um, if you're gonna be doing more, you're gonna want more. I have got six hard boiled eggs here. Whoa. Slippery little suckers. Gonna want the yolks right in. And I just did these right in my little um, egg cooker. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in here. Put a little bit of black pepper. I'm putting a tiny bit of Dijon in there, probably a quarter teaspoon. And maybe a quarter cup of um, mayo. I know, it seems like a lot of mayo, but I like it creamy. Okay. If you've got a little food processor, you can use that. You could use a chopper. You could use a fork to crush everything up. Okay, if you use something like this, it's a workout. But look how creamy and nice. And I just want to uh, make sure that there's enough salt and pepper in here. Needs a little more salt. It's much easier to do it this way. You could drop it in by a spoonful if you want. You can also put a star tip in this bag, a big star tip, to make um, the deviled eggs a little more fancy. Okay, I'm just gonna cut the corner out. You can make these as pretty as you want. I am gonna do the classic paprika, just so it um, has a little bit of red in it, but you could put sprinkle fresh herbs on here, you could put a pimento on the top of each, whatever you like to do. But there is my classic egg salad deviled eggs. All right, there is a boatload of easy appetizer ideas for you. Some old, some new, but all certainly delicious. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like videos like these, please consider subscribing. You can find me on Instagram at JennyGoff18. I'm also on Facebook, and you can visit my blog for all of my recipes, including these. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video, and have a Merry Christmas.